on the release of the hostages, or some of them. I'm joined by France 24's international affairs editor, Philip Turl. Good to have you with us on set, uh, Philip. Uh, first of all, I mean, what can you tell us? What more can you tell us about this deal that seems to have been agreed? Well, a couple of things to begin with, Angela. First of all, uh, this is just a, a, a portion of the hostages. We're not talking about all, all 240 here. We're talking about 50 hostages. So whatever happens, people are going to be disappointed uh, with this deal, those whose loved ones are still being held captive uh, and who will not be released. So we have a four-day pause in the fighting, the release of 50 women and children. That's uh, 20 children and 30 women. 150 Israeli-held Palestinian prisoners, again, women and children, are also to be freed. 300, 400 trucks of humanitarian aid are to be allowed into the Gaza Strip every day. That is the conditions that have been laid out and on which all sides have agreed. This is a pretty complicated negotiation taking place uh, with the kingpin negotiator, Qatar, uh, talking to both Hamas on one side, Hamas to whom it gives large amounts of money, and to the Israeli government, with which it also has relations, but with the United States as well, and also Egypt has been involved in these negotiations. So we've got this agreement now, which is uh, due to come into effect within the next few hours, but there are a lot of handicaps that need to be overcome as well. So we'll have to see whether or not between now and tomorrow the hostages are actually going to be released. What we're unsure about is, as I was saying before, which hostages we're talking about. Are they going to be, for example, any French hostages which are released? There are eight which are known to be there. Katrin Colonna, the French foreign minister, has called for them to be freed. We don't know if they're included in uh, the list of those hostages. Uh, we believe that there are three Americans who are due to be freed, including a three-year-old girl. Uh, but it's pretty vague still about exactly who is going to be uh, on this list and how they're actually going to get out of the Gaza Strip. And, and even though, as you say, the Israeli war cabinet has approved this deal in principle, there are still some obstacles uh, before uh, the hostages are actually released. It's going to be very complicated. Just to underline one thing, and that is that there is a lot of... Uh, I think, suspicion on both sides and hatred on both sides between Hamas and Israel. And there would just have to be one spark, one bullet, one bomb that goes off to throw all this into jeopardy. So that is also a big risk. Uh, and the question has to be asked, well, how many hostages would be affected by that? Would some of them be killed? Would this put an end to that process altogether? We don't know. How are the hostages going to be bought out of, of uh, the Gaza Strip? How is the International Red Cross going to get in there to get hold of the hostages? How many are, to come out, are going to come out in one go? We believe about 15 a day over the next five days or four days. Uh, and uh, are they going to be brought out blindfolded so that they don't know where they're being held? Uh, Hamas will obviously be very worried that the International Red Cross is going to be followed by the Israelis and they're going to try to take hold of Hamas positions afterwards. So all of this, the logistical side of it, is extremely complicated and nobody knows exactly how that is going to be worked out. And uh, the other question that has to be said is, who is the winner out of this? Is it Hamas that is winning by getting this ceasefire, by getting this no-fly zone over the Gaza Strip, meaning they can re-bring together their fighters, uh, move other hostages elsewhere? The longer these uh, ceasefires last, the more pressure there will be on the Israeli authorities to uh, sign a permanent ceasefire agreement. There is growing pressure in Israel as well to do all this, to bring in this ceasefire. If you look at the opinion polls, there was a, a recent poll by by Mary, which said that 59% of Israelis were in favour of a ceasefire, only 30% were against. But those 30% are very important because they can now go to the Supreme Court in Israel over the next 24 hours and say they don't agree with the freeing of Palestinian prisoners. And that could lead to this whole deal being scuppered by the Israelis. That is part of Israeli law. So a lot has to be still sorted out between now and when those hostages are finally freed. OK, well, thanks, Philip. Very tense time uh, again for those families of the hostages.